how can you build confidence as a mindfulness teacher? It can be really challenging when you've just trained to be a mindfulness teacher or perhaps perhaps you've trained a while ago, but you never found the confidence to actually start finding students, start charging some money for it perhaps, setting up classes and running or offering it, whether it's free or paid. That's what we're going to be learning today. That's what we're going to be exploring. This is the Teach Mindfulness podcast. My name is Shamash, and this is the first of a two-part little mini episodes on building confidence for mindfulness teachers. So first of all, uh, I've talked about the areas where there can be a lack of confidence that I've discovered for mindful teachers. First of all, it's in the actual teaching itself. You're not sure if you'll be able to teach well. You're not sure if you'll be able to guide the meditation. And if you do, you're not sure how the class will respond. Or maybe they'll ask a question that's really difficult and you're not sure how to cope with that. Setting up the classes themselves, especially when it's online, can be quite daunting. Uh, but even in person, where do you set it up? Who do, where do you offer it? And then the other hurdle can be, should it be free or should you charge some money? If it's free, then will anybody come? If you charge some money, is it too little? Is it too much? How do you decide and you may just feel very uncomfortable and so not charge so these are all the kind of common issues that come up but they're all linked to confidence and the first important mindful thing I want to share about confidence is that confidence is not the absence of fear okay I like to use the word courage rather than confidence because if you're waiting for confidence to come but you're not actually teaching mindfulness, you're not actually practicing and you're not taking action, then unfortunately the confidence isn't just magically going to arise. We need to build that confidence. And one of the best ways is by taking action, not so much by just thinking. So what we need to do is actually deal with the thoughts and the feelings that come up and make space for courage and make space for the difficult feelings that will come up in the process. So I'm going to be sharing with you um, the latest psychology approaches from ACT to help you build confidence. And so the first one is like, I've told you that, you know, we need to create courage. And so courage is about taking action with those difficult feelings. So let's say you want to set up a mindfulness class. And as you're setting it up, you're starting to feel a lot of anxiety in your in your stomach. Well, you can do the first part of ACT, which is about acceptance. So you notice the feeling uh, in your belly, you notice the feelings of anxiety, you create a space for it to be there, you need, and you cultivate acceptance, allowing, letting it be. And rather than thinking of that as a bad sign, as if you're you're doing something wrong or you're not confident enough, so you shouldn't do it, instead thinking, no, this is absolutely natural. We hurt where we care. I've, I've talked about that a little bit in previous episodes. We hurt where we care. If there's anxiety coming up or stress coming up, it's because of, I care about this. I want it to go well. And so it's a good thing. It's giving me energy. So making space for the tricky feelings is the first step. Second thing, which is uh, a little bit more unique to ACT and has been well tested, is to use unhooking techniques or diffusion techniques for your, you can call them your negative thoughts. So if you have a thought like, I'm never going to be a good mindfulness teacher, or I can't do this, or I'm not good enough. One simple diffusion technique would be to learn to step away from that thought without, not in the sense of running away from it, but just creating some distance between you and the thought. If you get into the mindset of, I, you know, I'm going to get rid of this thought, it actually gives it more power. But if you say, let's say, I'm not good enough to teach mindfulness, is your negative thought and it keeps coming up and it's got an emotional tone connected to it. You can just add the sentence, I notice I'm having the thought. And then whatever your thought is, I notice I'm having the thought, I'm not a good enough mindfulness teacher. And then you can say something like, thank you, mind. And if you do that a few times a day, maybe for a few days or for a week or two, you might start to create some space between you and that negative thought. And it won't have so much of a hold on you. And so you'll be able to take those actions to move forwards. So confidence is not the absence of fear. 
what we want to do is not cultivate so much confidence. The confidence will come, but we start with the courage. And so I've told you how to make space for the feelings, diffuse from the negative thoughts. And then thirdly, it's important to have motivation and to remind you why you're doing this in the first place. And this is a very meaningful work that we're talking about here. And so that's a great advantage for us. So we can remember our why. Why am I actually teaching mindfulness in the first place? Because if I believe in mindfulness, maybe you've had some experience where mindfulness has changed your life. Maybe you want to share compassion in the world. Maybe you believe if children could learn about mindful skills, then they'll spread it to others. Whatever your reason is, your why, your your values that underlie the reason why you're doing these actions, that will give you the motivation to make space for the for the anxiety. For example, if you really believe, you know, all children should learn mindfulness, and that's a deep value of yours, sharing and um, creating and and mind, being mindful. Uh, then even if you had these feelings of anxiety, hopefully you'd still take the action, you'd still go into the school and do it because it's important. So tuning into the values is an important part of this as well. So I've given you uh, some tips there, some approaches you can start using to build confidence. And I'm going to go into it in more detail in the next episode. So thanks for listening. And uh, do check out the links that go along with this podcast. Drop us a review if you have a few moments as well. Thanks so much for listening.